Intel is getting ready to launch the first generation of ARC discrete graphics cards for desktop and mobile platforms. In this video, I have combined all the official as well as leaked information from trusted sources on the entire lineup of these highly anticipated GPUs to show you the bigger picture of what you should expect from Intel's first generation of big graphics cards. That includes the specs, performance, release date, price and more. Before that, a quick message from a sponsor. Buy your Windows 10 license for less at cdkoffers.com using the link in the description below. Use code IV20 for an additional 20% off and safely check out with PayPal for instant delivery. First of all, let's talk about the naming scheme Intel will use to clarify its ARC products. Right now they have Intel ARC A300, A500 and A700 series. You can think about it in the same way as of NVIDIA graphics card names, where a higher digit indicates a higher tier of performance. Additionally, these names will be segmented further. For example, in A300 series there are A350 and A380 graphics cards, where A350 is the weaker one. Now I want to share the official information that Intel made public yesterday. The company confirmed that it will reveal its first ARC GPU on March 30th. It will be an entry-level A370M mobile graphics card that has doubled the gaming performance of Intel's current top-spec integrated graphics, which is pretty weak for gaming, but it should be fine to play some Valorant, League of Legends and maybe even Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p resolution. No AAA gaming at 60fps though, that will come later, when the higher tier GPUs launch. The fact that Intel is teasing its low-end ARC GPU instead of a high-end tells us that those are not ready for launch just yet. But I do have leaked information about the upcoming ARC desktop graphics cards, so let's check it out. There will be at least 5 desktop ARC graphics cards built on TSMC 6 nanometer node. A350 is the weakest in the stack. It will have 96 execution units and 768 shader processors with 4GB of GDDR6 memory across a 64-bit bus. In terms of performance, I expect it to be around GTX 1050 Ti level, meaning that it will be ok for some light games like Valorant and CSGO at 1080p, but not good enough to play any modern AAA titles comfortably. When I say comfortably, I mean frame rates in the range of at least 45 to 60 FPS. A380 will have 128 execution units and 1024 shader processors, with 6GB of GDDR6 memory across a 96-bit bus. Most likely it will compete with the likes of GTX 1650 Super, which is nice, because both AMD and Nvidia neglected low end of the GPU market in the past couple of years, so Intel has a chance to please a lot of new customers at the low price points. A580 will have 384 execution units and 3072 shader processors, with 8GB of GDDR6 memory across a 128-bit bus. My rough estimation is that it will be somewhere in the RTX 3060 range in terms of gaming performance. A770 featuring 448 execution units and 3584 shader processors with 12GB of GDDR6 memory across a 192-bit bus should be able to compete with RTX 3060 Ti or even 3070. Lastly, the most powerful A780 ARC graphics card will have 512 execution units and 4096 shader processors, with 16GB of GDDR6 memory across a 256-bit bus. According to the latest leaks, it is expected to perform somewhere in the range between RTX 3070 and 3080. I think it will be closer to RTX 3070. As for the release dates, Intel is running out of time to launch its first generation of ARC GPUs because both next-gen NVIDIA RTX 4000 series and AMD RX 7000 series based on RDNA 3 are set to launch in the second half of this year. The ARC cards will not be able to compete with that. So, I won't be surprised if some of the release dates I am about to share with you get pushed forward for that reason. The low-end ARC Mobile GPUs will be revealed on March 30th and should launch in April with higher tier models following soon after. 
Desktop Arc GPUs should launch in May to June, however, some teasers or paper launches are possible before that. Taking into consideration everything I said above, Intel must price Arc graphics cards very aggressively versus the current Nvidia and AMD offerings. So, expect to get a good deal on a new GPU if you are ok with becoming an early adopter. I am sure that Intel wants to polish the drivers to perfection for this launch to go smoothly, but no doubt there will be teething problems as with any first generation of new hardware. Are you excited to see Intel enter the GPU market? I am waiting for you in the comments below to have a conversation about it. Also like the video if you enjoyed it. It was I, Vadim, until next time.